Hello, and welcome to episode 7 of Sarastro's Star Wars Legion painting series. In this episode, we're going to paint the ATST from Fantasy Flight Games' Star Wars Legion. The ATST is a truly epic miniature, and being fully poseable gives us many creative options when choosing how to position the vehicle. In painting the ATST, I've taken inspiration from the movies and chosen an approach that will allow for a controlled measure of tonal variation and weathering. Let's take a look at the painting stages. I'll be loosely following the provided building guide to assemble the miniature, and will be using green stuff to help adhere the feet to the base, although superglue would also be fine. I'll then be priming the figure in grey. We'll then paint the ATST with a brownish grey, followed with some lighter layers of highlight, achieved with a large flat brush and with plenty of dry brushing along the way. Next we'll apply some selective shading which will both darken the recesses and produce a more weathered look. We'll heighten this with some more oily weathering, and we'll introduce some subtle variations of hue with a sponge, along with some metallic chips and scratches. Let's begin. The ATST comes in several pieces, but is fairly simple to assemble using the instructions that come with the kit. First, we glue together the two halves of each leg, and I'm using a brush on superglue by Loctite. Next I'm going to glue the ankle brackets, and you can maintain freedom of the joint movement by avoiding gluing the legs if you like. We can now glue on the feet. I'll return to the legs in a moment, now I'm going to glue the rear plate onto the central body. I'm also gluing in the head mount column. Next I'm going to snap fit the twin blaster cannon into the mounting bracket. This can then either be glued onto the head now, or dry fitted for the time being. Before gluing anything else, I'm going to dry fit the remaining parts of the legs and attach them to the body. I'm now playing around with some different poses to decide how I want to position the vehicle, and I'm using some poster putty to hold the feet down whilst I do this. Once we've chosen how we wish to pose the ATST, we can go ahead and glue the remaining parts with that pose in mind. I've chosen to leave the head off for now, simply to make it easier to paint. I'm once again using poster putty or white tack to hold the feet in place whilst I rehearse the final position before sticking them down permanently. Because I want the feet to be positioned at specific angles to achieve the pose I'm after, I've chosen to use some green stuff, which is a two-part modelling putty, to attach them to the base. However, if you'd like the feet to be stuck down flat, then superglue would be fine. All I'm doing here is cutting off a length of the green stuff, and, using wet fingers to prevent it sticking, I'm twisting it until it turns a pure green. We then have around 20 minutes or so to work with the putty before it begins to set. As mentioned, sticking the feet down flat with superglue would be absolutely fine. I just had a very specific dynamic pose in mind that is easier for me to achieve with the use of green stuff. With the feet in the position I want, I'm now packing in some additional putty to ensure they're held as firmly in place as possible. And I'm also scoring in the firing arcs. Although it's primarily marketed as a modelling putty, Green stuff is actually a very strong adhesive, and even the relatively small area of contact on this raised leg should be enough to hold it pretty firmly in place once dry.
I'm now using some of the excess putty to create some more uneven terrain to add interest to the base, bearing in mind that this will also be covered in basing paste later on. Once done, I'm going to leave the model overnight to allow the putty to fully dry. The model should now be held firmly in place and ready for priming. I'm first going to dry fit the blaster cannon and grenade launcher into the head of the vehicle. And for the purposes of priming, I'm sticking the mortar launcher and the blank pegs to a pencil. You could of course glue the mortar launcher onto the vehicle if you wish. And I'm doing the same for the head of the vehicle. I'm then going to prime the whole lot off camera with Mechanicus Standard Grey. With that done, we're ready to begin painting. The approach I've chosen to colour the ATST is to create some gradations of tone by building up from the Mechanicus Standard Grey for the darker areas of the vehicle to Celestra Grey for the brighter, more upturned areas, such as the top of the head. I'm going to mix some Xandri Dust into both shades of grey to create a subtle brown tint. I'm first preparing quite a large quantity of Mechanicus Standard Grey, and then mixing in my Xandri Dust in a roughly 4 to 1 ratio. You can see I'm keeping the consistency pretty thick. I'm now using a size 6 flat brush to paint the vehicle. Notice that I'm not too concerned if the brush doesn't get into the deepest recesses. I'm now going to mix a little Xandri Dust into some Celestra Grey to create my highlight tone. The quick approach here might be to dry brush this paler tone over the base colour. The jump in brightness however might lead to some rather rough transitions and a chalky looking finish. We can instead apply some intermediate layers to create a smoother look. So I'm now mixing some of this into the dark base tone. I'm then working over the previous layer but beginning to leave more of the recesses and areas of shadow, such as the underside of the vehicle, untouched. With my brush loaded with paint, I might begin working on the areas where I know I want a bright, solid finish. But as the amount of paint on the brush reduces, we can begin applying it more like a dry brush, flicking it across the surfaces where we want the recessed details to remain dark. Here on the turret mounts, you'll see me using a dry brush to create a fairly blurred gradient from the highlight on the top to the shadow beneath. I'm now lightening the tone further in a couple of stages and repeating the process, honing the areas of highlight as I do so. Once again, you'll see me applying the paint quite wet to the flat, upturned surfaces, but using a drier brush for the more textured areas. I'm no longer lightening the sides of the head except for the turret mounts, as I want them to appear shadowed in comparison to the top and front. You don't have to use as many intermediate stages as I'm doing, just one or two should still allow you to create some pretty smooth gradations of tone.
I'm now using the pure highlight tone, which I'm mostly dry brushing onto the most extreme highlights and prominent edges. We can see that dry brushing is a technique that's not only ideal for easily highlighting raised details and edges, but it's also capable of producing some surprisingly smooth transitions. With that done, we're ready to add some weathering. Now that we have a cleanly painted ATST, we're going to add some weathering which will also serve to push the depth in the shade, and introduce some needed colour variation. As usual, all of these steps could be considered optional depending on your personal preference. I'm going to begin by using some non-oil to push the depth in the shadows, whilst also beginning the weathering process by adding some grimy oily tones to the vehicle. This can be used almost like a glaze to darken the shadowed ends of some of my gradients, like you can see here. Notice I'm using a damp brush to feather the edges of the shaded area. This effect can be built up in more than one layer, and it's fine if the finished look is a little dirty and uneven. I'm also brushing this into all of the recessed areas and joints to dirty them up and increase the definition. We can be quite liberal with the shade for all of the underside and inner machine parts. Before weathering the head, I'm going to first paint some of the details on the weapons with an equal mix of lead belcher and black. I'm now returning to my non oil to continue the weathering. Here on the twin blasters, I'm creating a build-up of a black sooty deposit around the tips. I'm also using this to darken the inside of the viewing hatches. You might like to use this to draw on some oily streaks.
I'm now going to push the weathering further with the use of some typhus corrosion. Although this can be applied neat, I've chosen to thin it down to produce some more subtle variations of tone. I'm applying it here like a thin glaze to introduce some colour variation and to create the impression of a dirtier finish, particularly for the leg area. This is also a nice product for creating streaks with. At this point I've chosen to glue the gun mount to the head. Next I'm going to sponge on various thinned tones to create some subtle staining and some further colour variation. There are of course many colours you could choose to try this. I'm starting with some thinned storm vermin fur. This is fairly close in tone to the grey metal work so should allow us to create some nice subtle shifts of colour. Next I'm using some thinned Castellan Green. And finally some thinned Zandri Dust. Because this is more luminous and yellowish, it not only serves our weathering purposes, but can also be used as a way to roughly boost the areas of highlight. So here you can see me gently emphasising the more raised and upturned areas of the model. Now we've achieved some gently weathered textures and colour shifts, I'm going to use a mix of Stormhurst Silver and Celestra Grey to add some scratchy edge highlights to the metalwork. You can see I'm mostly using the edge of the brush to do this. Like so much of the weathering, this not only serves to create a more battle-worn finish, but it also doubles up as another means of pushing the contrast. I'm also using this to freehand some scratches onto the plating at the front. I'm now using a sponge to create some more irregular areas of chipped paint. I've chosen not to add any rust effects for this vehicle, but you could do so if you wish. Next I'm going to use some German grey to add some further complexity to the scratches and create a sense of relief around some of the areas of chipped paint. This could also be used to add some blaster marks if you wish. I'm now going to glue the head into place. and I'm basing the miniature just as described in the previous episodes, which means applying some basing paste, followed with a green shade. 
and a range of additional basing products to bring the base to life. Apart from applying a matte spray for protection, I'm finishing the model off with a few final edge highlights. And this completes the ATST. Thank you for watching. I hope you have enjoyed the video. Don't forget you can find a full list of products used in the video description along with links to where you can find me on social media. Join me again soon as we continue painting miniatures from Star Wars Legion. Happy painting!